We're going to be learning about the conformational isomers of cycloalkanes in the next lecture. And cycloalkanes have uh, additional components to their strain. And you can actually see that uh, here with cyclopropane. Uh, recall that carbon, when it's tetrahedrally coordinated, uh, wants bond angles that are 109.5. But in cyclopropane, this angle is 60 degrees. And so there's a lot of angle strain in cyclopropane that adds to a destabilized molecule. Cyclobutane has uh, less angle strain because now these angles want to be approximately 90 degrees. Uh, but in order to relieve torsional strain, which is caused by the eclipsing sigma bonds with these hydrogens, uh, cyclobutane actually exists in a puckered configuration. So it's not, it's not planar, it actually puckers just a little bit, so the angles aren't exactly 90 degrees, um, but that relieves a little bit of that torsional strain that you would otherwise have. We're going to spend most of our time talking about cyclo hexane. And so let me build cyclohexane. So here's cyclohexane. And cyclohexane can actually exist in a couple of different kind of conformations. Um, the one that we're going to spend most of our time talking about is the so-called chair conformation. And so this is the chair conformation. Uh, notice that there are uh, some of the hydrogens are pointing sort of up and some are pointing down. And this sort of exhibits a chair. If you look at the uh, carbons, you'll see this is the back of the chair, and then we have the seat of the chair, and then this is where your legs would hang off. So this is called the chair conformation. So three of the carbon atoms are up carbons, and then three of the carbon atoms are what we might call down carbons. The hydrogens can be in two different locations. One of them is what's called the axial location, so that is along the axis, and the other is in an equatorial location, that is uh, going away from sort of the center of the molecule. Now, uh, cyclohexane can do what's called a ring flip, that is these up carbons can become down carbons and the hydrogens can flip from equatorial positions to axial positions. Now for cyclohexane, both of these conformations are the same because everything is, uh, we've got, uh, every bond is carbon-hydrogen or carbon-carbon bond. Substituted cyclohexanes can exhibit quite different strain. So let me put a different substituent on here. Let's just say that's a chlorine atom, for example. Uh, the chlorine atom can be either in the axial position or if we go through a ring flip, it can be in an equatorial position. So when it's in an equatorial position, notice that the chlorine has more space. And so when we put it back up into the axial position, Notice that this chlorine is in closer proximity to these two hydrogens right here, which are both uh, axial hydrogens. And so we have what's called a 1, 3, so this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 1, 3 diaxial interactions, which is steric strain. So cyclohexane can have steric strain from these 1, 3 diaxial interactions. So in this conformation, we've got 1,3 diaxial interactions. If we do a ring flip, put that chlorine out here in an equatorial position, and we have less strain. In addition to the chair conformation, cyclohexane can also exist in what's called a boat conformation. Although the boat conformation has additional strain. Notice that these two substituents are in mo much closer proximity. Uh, in addition, if we look down 
the axis of these bonds, we have torsional strain. So the boat conformation is less stable than the chair conformation unless there's something special about the molecule. For example, if I have a cis 1,4 disubstituted cyclohexane, and these are, say, tert-butyl groups, they take up so much space that the 1,3 diaxial interactions are very unstable. And so something like cis 1,4 di tert-butyl cyclohexane would ex actually exist in the boat conformation because